Justin Horowitz in the sulky with the sports top driver, at least by money earned, Yannick Jingra. Yannick, always nice to have you. Thanks for joining us. No, anytime. Absolutely. I know there was some traffic getting here, but you will be involved in many, many races tonight. And we need to start off uh, with a horse that will not be here tonight, uh, Hanalor Hanover, the superstar trotting mare uh, who was so dominant last year. Came up a little short in her seasonal debut. I know she's back in Monday in the Miss Versatility, but what happened to her out in Ohio? Uh, you know, we have a little bit uh, maybe different opinion. But Ronnie's thinking that the bridle, uh, maybe she was a little bit too laid back, and uh, he likes her when she's a little more aggressive. I think maybe I just didn't qualify her fast enough. You know, I really babied her. Uh, I trained her the last couple trips before qualifiers. I didn't go, no, maybe as fast as uh, I should have. I qualified her really easy. I mean, uh, it's a long year. I thought she would win anyway. You know what I mean? I thought, uh, you know, she just was a little bit better than the field and maybe sometimes a little overconfidence. But, uh, I mean, she got a good trip. She came out of it good, and uh, I think she'll be just fine. So uh, just one little hiccup in a road to a very long season. Now, uh, Mayor Philly that we'll see tonight making her uh, 2017 debut. The champion two-year-old, of course, that would be Ariana G. When we last saw her for money here at the Meadowlands, it was winning the Breeders' Crown Final. Two qualifiers. She's tuning up for the New Jersey Sire Stakes tonight. What can we expect from her in her seasonal debut? Uh, she's ready to go. You know, she qualified really good the, the second time, be no, better than the first time. She was good the first time. She was very good the second time. Uh, she's really a good filly. And British Crown there, she won. She was not nearly at her best. You know, she was. it was a long season, maybe a tiny bit tired. And But uh, I, I think uh, she's a top filly, and I'm looking forward to drive her tonight. Pretty incredible that you and Mr. Tactor have teamed up to win three straight Hamiltonian Oaks. How good is this one? I'm, I'm not asking you to compare. Well, actually, I'm compare her to the uh, previous three because that's what I do. I ask these tough questions. Yeah, I'm just lucky that uh, you know he asked me to drive the last three, and uh, uh, you know it's not that hard to drive uh, for for those guys. But uh, this one, uh, to me, uh, going in, she's the best one of the four, no doubt. You know, uh, a lifetime pursuit uh, was a really nice filly, but uh, you know, Shake a Carry is better than her. Uh, Wild Honey won as well, and uh, Mission Brief was better than her. She wasn't, you know, I mean, obviously Mission Brief didn't go in it, but. And uh, last year, all the time, you know, she overcame a lot of things. And, you know, it's this one's full sister, but they don't compare. I mean, as a two-year-old, they didn't compare. Uh, this one, to me, is the best one of the, of the four. And, no, I'm not calling wood. I'm not jinxing that. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really confident. That's a uh, pretty big praise for her. So we're looking forward to seeing her tonight in race five. Race six tonight, we'll tow with the older horse. That's crazy. Wow. Uh, race huge in both starts this year and came up second to a uh, – monster basically both times in t-rex and then resolve here in the cutler what did you make of him going into the cutler coming out of the cutler and what do you see from him tonight well we had a little issue last week in the post parade he came on the track and uh, he, he wasn't feeling right um you know i went back to the paddock and took the boots off of him and it, it felt like something was bugging him left hind um it seemed like maybe there was a rock it was a, a lot of irritation inside the boot once they took it off after afterwards anyway i scored him back down and he was a lot better so, um, we, you know, we put the boot back on and went. But it really, like, uh, got him fired up. You know, I wasn't able to get him to relax in the race. I mean, uh, those mile and an eighth, you know, being used 26 of the quarter, you know you're going to be missing something late. And I usually try not to do that. Uh, but in that race, I, I was just a passenger. And, that, and that's what, you know, I'm not saying Resolve is not. You no, know, Resolve is a great horse. He might have beat me anyway. But uh, I made, I made his, uh, his race a lot easier by not being, get, not being able to get mine to relax. I know he's got the Maxi Lee coming up a week from Sunday. So tonight's start, a pretty good field that he's in against. Uh, any lingering effects from the Cutler, or is he good to go 100% tonight? I mean, I, I haven't seen him since, but from what I heard, uh, everything is uh, perfect. You know, they, like I said, they, when they took uh, the Advent Traps on there, when they took it off, it was like a lot of irritation. But, I mean, uh, he's good to go now. And uh, from what I heard, all systems are going. And, you know, he's going to get raced tonight, no doubt about it. Uh, uh, we're, we're here to win. Tomorrow night in the Graduate, that's a $75,000 stakes race. For the four-year-old trotters, you have Dason, who might have been a little bit disappointing last week, was on the lead and didn't offer a whole lot in the stretch. Adds Lasix tomorrow night. Uh, how big is that change, and what do you make of his chances? Well, I'm glad you said that because uh, <laughs> I was I was totally bled, uh, and he was uh, going to be put on Lasix, but I haven't looked at the program, so I wasn't sure if he was or not. So uh, I'm glad you said it. Yeah, he definitely bled uh, quite a bit last time. I was disappointed, but um, you know, turning for home, he felt like a million dollar, and he's trotted better and sounder last week than he did all of last year. Um, so at that point, I thought I was just going to jog, honestly, from there. And then uh, turned for home, and he had nothing. So. Uh, when I come up the track, I told him, I said, uh, he's either sick or bled because, uh, you know, soundness-wise, he's as good as ever. 
So, um, you know, obviously then they scoped him and he, and he bled. So first time Lasix tomorrow night, I think uh, I think he'd be really, really good. Yeah, that's a really exciting race tomorrow night. Broadway Donna, of course, uh, always nice when the mares take on the boys. Now, let's look bigger picture here. Going into the last several seasons, you were the person going whenever Hamiltonian was mentioned. It was what a strong hand Yannick's holding and then uh, disappointment on Hamiltonian Day. So now it's kind yeah. of a different scenario for you. All we're talking about is Tim Tietrich and Walner. Where's Yannick going to be on Hamiltonian Day? And, and is it better to be the one that nobody's talking about at this point? No, I'd rather be the one that I, I'd rather <laughs> be driving the favorite. You know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'd rather be chased than chasing them. There's no doubt about it. Anybody, any driver is going to tell you the opposite is lying to you. But uh, no, it, it is what it is. You know, it, uh, Timmy's got the best one this year, and he, he's no doubt the horse to beat. But uh, I know better than anybody. It's, it's a long way from here till uh, the first Saturday in August. You know, his horse looks uh, incredible. He qualified real. He qualified great. Um, but mine did too. So uh, it's getting no. We'll we'll, uh, we'll see what we get. No, no, the next two months. What no leads to it? It's a long road. Now looking at the bigger picture in the industry right now, I know all the time we're hearing things like there's a horse shortage or all the different issues that seem to get mentioned all the time. From your perspective, as somebody who's so involved and, and has so much in this game, what do you see as maybe the top issue that we can all get together and work on this summer? Well, the top issue is there's one 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 A one B one C one D, and it's all the same. It's marketing. We don't market our product. Um, you know, if it was brought up by somebody else and Jeff Garral, the whole 5% or whatever percentage it is, I think it would have gone through 10 years ago. But because it's Jeff that brought it up, um, you know, it, it didn't get put together. But like, there's no doubt, like, we're going for more money now than we ever have, um, you know, the, the last five years. And uh, it's unfortunate because maybe 10 years from now, they're going to take it away from us, you know, the slot machines. And we're going to say, well, we should have spent some of that money to try to get the people into the track. So uh, I think we're wasting, we're spinning our will, we're wasting our time. Uh, all their different group or, or no um, horsemen association they just want to pull every di different direction whether it's New York Pennsylvania Ohio um, they should all get together and, and I'm not saying to give the money to Jeff Gorrell or give money to his people I, I, I've always been about like let's hire the best marketing firm that we can afford let them market our sport and because we don't know what we're talking about like you know no offense Jeff does what he can do best but that's not his job either and I'm not knocking it he does a great job but with the money we're talking about we can afford the people that know what they're talking about and then uh, that, that's unfortunate that's that's not getting done yet and it might never get done but I'm telling you 10 or 15 years from now we're gonna regret it that's really well said uh, let's let's go back to horses here uh, you talk about so many good horses that you drive that you're coming back this time of year I think everybody's looking forward to the major stakes races is it fair for me to ask you is there one horse or two horses that you're most excited about and is there a horse maybe under the radar we know about Hanalore we know about Ariana G and all the champions that you drive Lady Shadow but is there maybe one other horse under the radar that people don't talk about that you're really looking forward to racing this year uh, under the radar, I would say probably Rubio. Uh, it's a horse that, you know, he, he can't, you know, maybe he's not quite as good as Walner, uh, who knows, but last year early on, I really, really liked him. Uh, he's a beautiful horse, good mouth on him. He had a lot of speed, and then uh, he had a couple issues. You know, we got, you know, he made a break in Canada at the end of the year, was really sore. They found some issues on him. Jimmy's taking his time with him now, but, uh, no, if he's a sleeper, I think, you know, obviously Walner, I get like, way, above the, uh, way above him right now. I'm not saying that in the same class, but it's a horse that uh, I think could be, could cause a surprise, no doubt about it. All right, well, that's all good stuff from Yannick Jingra. A big night here with Sire Stakes. Uh, always exciting to have you in the Silky. Thanks a lot for all your insight, and good luck this season. Anytime. All right, Dave Brower going to join me next as we tee up the Friday night action. Back after this.